Well, a lot of you are probably thinking, why am I rocking up to watch this pubescent looking, ex-soldier, croc wearing bloke that probably has no idea about electrics. Why am I watching him over every other person on YouTube to talk about camper van electrics? Why me? Well, personally, I haven't got a flipping clue, mate, but you've decided to come here. So now, since you've clicked on it, you might as well learn with me, because that's what you've come here to do, isn't it? You've come here to learn about electrics and slam them into your camper. Today, I'm gonna be talking about how I'm gonna hook up the charging element of the electric system for your camper van. So that is gonna be me. And the reason I need that is because it is, well, it's become very unbearable in here. I've had to return to my dad's drive and I'm now sat here with a little heater hooked up and it's it's a lot more bearable, it's a lot more comfortable compared to last week where we were in the long mind, up in the hills, up in the ice, up in the fog, couldn't even take my jacket off. I still can't feel my toes, but you know, that's the crocs for you. Let's get on with doing the electrics, so that's what you came here for. I'm Jake, this is Jake's journey mate, I'm an ex-British soldier, and if you haven't been here before, I started converting this van about a year ago. Yeah, nice one Jake, was it going so slow? But it's because I'm being very careful. So let's hope that I can be careful with these electrics too, because nobody wants a shock, and nobody wants my hair stood up on end more than it already is. So, let's crack on, let's do it, and um, let's show you what electrics it is that we're gonna be throwing in today. First things first, what are we charging? Well, we don't want to run our electrics off the vehicle's main battery because then you're going to end up with a dead vehicle in the middle of nowhere that you can't start up and then you're full good. These are the vehicle batteries that we're going to be using to run our electrical system off. So with these, I did go for a more expensive option than your standard AGM batteries. They are lithium iron phosphate, 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries, and I have two of these. Why are they expensive and what are the perks, Jake? Well. They're expensive because lithium, as well as giving you deeper cycles, which means you can use more of the battery's available power, although I wouldn't suggest going below 20%, they give you a larger amount of amp hours for the size and weight of a battery compared to conventional lead batteries and stuff like that. Also, quicker charging. These ones have got Bluetooth connectivity, so we don't need to worry about putting a shunt on the system. We can actually just connect it to our phone and be like, right, I've got this much battery left, woo! And then you could fire up the toaster, get the Xbox on, do what you want. I don't have an Xbox. Or a toaster. I might have gone overkill with the batteries, but you know what? At least I won't be worried. We can go off grid for a while and we'll be laughing. So Jake, you've got your batteries. How are you charging them? Well, in order to charge these batteries, I've got these. When I say these, this is just one of them. It is, I don't want it to touch my face. It's going to focus on my face. Stop it. This is a Vitron 30 amp DC to DC, and it's a non-isolated one, which means that, well, basically, let's put it into Leyland's terms. If you've got a non-isolated one, it's for vans that you can connect your ground earth to anywhere on the van chassis. If you've got an isolated one, it's for more your camper vans where it's a big plastic box and you're struggling to grab your earths off your chassis and stuff like that. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's about. There's the box. We're going to put two of those in the line. Let's have a look at what it actually looks like, though. That is the badger there. That is 35 mil wide wire, and that runs at 345 amps. So you can chuck up to 345 amps through that. I wouldn't. The reason I've gone thick as hell, there's only going to be 60 amps running through it between two of those. The reason I've gone for 245 amp is because it's over a long distance from the starter battery down there, running down the back of these units, all the way along, and then down into the back of there. That's about four meters, and running 60 amps continuously for like an hour or something like that, or three hours or four hours while you're driving to keep those batteries chopped up, it will drop off with the DC to DCs. When it gets to nearly charged on the batteries, like 80%, it'll then start to trickle charge them up. But when you're running 60 amps through it for quite some time, that's gonna get hot, and that's why I went for 345 amp, just Basically just to mitigate that issue. We don't want that getting hot. Hot wires equals fires in vans and nobody wants fires in vans because that is not good for anyone's health. Especially around a good 30 odd kilograms of lithium batteries because that shit goes so hot. So from there into those, we're gonna need something to stop if there's a surge of power. That's these bad boys, mega fuses. We're gonna run that wire through a mega fuse box with a 100 amp fuse. From this one, it's gonna split into two wires, the red bad boy, because that's positive coming out of there, and that's 16 millimeter wire. That stuff's good to about 110 amps, and that's what's gonna split down to go into these two. Once it's gone into those two, it's gonna go 
into a bus bar. The reason it doesn't go straight into the battery is because by the time we've got that power running in off the DC to DCs and by the time we put the solar in, there's going to be like 15 loops mounting up on the bolts that sit on top of the batteries, which you can see there these badgers nobody wants that not good for your batteries makes it all messy and we don't want messy when it comes to heat and electric we're gonna have a shut off a power killer so we can work on the system at any time and then we've got tape accordingly to the colors of positive and negative we've got relevant lugs for the wire and each sizes and that just means we can connect it up to whatever it is we need to connect it up to almost missed these bad boys they came with the batteries and i'm presuming they are so you can connect the batteries to each other which is exactly what we're going to be doing because we need those batteries to charge simultaneously or whether they charge one by one or, i don't know but it'll work and let's just get on with it before it goes dark come on let's grab our flipping electrics and hope for the best this could go shockingly wrong first things first we've got to get that panel off down there ah you know what i think the perfect tool for this is in the center tray here two pence piece that's looking good come on man if we look here that's your positive and we've got a bus bar coming off it here and then we've got a 500 amp fuse that goes off down here so I'm just gonna hook up to this one before the fuse because we've got our own fuse into that wire so let's go off that. This is the big beastie that we're gonna use because that's what's gonna carry the ampage down. Let's get it next to the battery and then we can figure out how long we want it to be to go around the back of the units. I think that's actually gonna be more faff than I expected to get around the back of the units but you know what let's give it a go. <sighs> I went a little bit dark on you there for a minute guys. Um, I'm back and this is what I've done. If you take a look down there, you can see the wire from that end that's going from the starter battery. It's not hooked up yet. It goes round all the way around the back of the units, up and under there. You can see it across the back. I'm having to do some serious gymnastics right now to get this in frame. And then she goes down under there and up to the bottom of there. There she is. So now she can come straight to this board, which I've just fitted. This is just a piece of 12 mil, 60 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Uh, that I've just put in place there, screwed it in, and it just gives us a hard back surface to screw all this good stuff into, because these bus bars, they need screwing into the wall, so does this, so do these, and so do these. So that just gives us a good base to work off rather than screwing through and going into the garage with all the screws. It's going well. I don't think I'm gonna get it done today because the only thing that I haven't got for this setup right now is the... There's like little plastic clips that you can put to the put onto the wire the whole way that it goes across. And as it runs down the back of the units there and then round the back of there and all over everywhere until it hits the batteries, it's just a bit messy. I don't like the idea of that wire floating around stuff that it might rub on, wear back the rubber that coats it, anything. It getting hot itself and causing dramas. So tomorrow I'm gonna go to like a DIY store and get some 35 mil clips that I can hook that then onto the wall. Well, screw into the wall, get it out of the way. But until then, what I can do is carry on. Bro, gotta be done. Right, let's get the batteries in place to be fair. They need to go down into their settlements, which are down, and they're gonna sit like this actually. Well, let's just rotate them like that. They're gonna sit, oh, they're heavy. They're gonna sit like that, down there. Seen, seen. Let's flap this up. Let's move the wire out of the way that we've just put in place. And let's get one of these down in there. Yeah. Or we can do it again. There we go. Squared away. Dumble door. There we go. Dumbledore. Dumbledore. If you're new here, that means it's done. That's that badger square. Get the handles tucked in. With a back braking effort, that is now both batteries in and set parallel. The armoured and cavalry lads among you will know that that was nothing on trying to get the batteries in and out of the turret of a Challenger 2 main battle tank. <laughs> Ugh. been a long gold night but here we go day two 
seeing as it's now Monday, we can get ourselves down to the DIY shop and get ourselves the little extra bits that we did need, which are for connecting the wire to the wall down the back of the unit. And also, now I'm thinking, I'm going to need some extra 35mm wire or something just a little bit less so I can connect the negative bus bar to the earth and also the positive bus bar to the batteries because at the minute I've only got this stuff and although it's over a short distance I want to go a little bit thicker just to peace of mind. What I've been doing is a little bit of behind the scenes work so I did manage to get the extra wire that I needed because I wasn't anticipating the five meter roll of 35 mil wire the one that runs from the starter battery to the other batteries I wasn't expecting that to actually be five meters and it's literally been the perfect amount but what I have been doing off camera I've been strapping the existing wire behind the units as you can see there I've been having to use cable ties and then I've screwed them into the wall but you can see that black lining around it. While I was at the DIY store, I decided to get some of this, and it's just a hard wearing tubing that I've put around the 35 mil wire that runs through the van, because I don't want any rubbing, any dodging, any bits and bobs that can go wrong with it. So, safety precautions, wear your wellies, two johnnies, all that sort of good stuff. Now I'm gonna start hooking these badges up. I've made some wires here already. They're both exactly the same length. When you come off here to the inputs on the DC to DCs, both of them, although it's not the same length away, need to be identical length just to spread the current evenly. Or some reason like that, I'm not entirely sure, but they need to be the same length so it's split. But yeah, I'm gonna do that now, let's crack on. This is where we're at. Check before you wreck. That is now all your positives coming in and to your bus bar. What I'm going to do now is set up our negatives. I'm going to put the negative bus bar in there and then I'm going to bring out the negatives from that point there and that point there. They're both going to come shoop, into the negative bus bar and then down from the negative bus bar into the earth down on the vehicle chassis. Once I've done that, I'm going to get the main wire and hook it up to the starter battery. Once I've done that, I'm going to hook the batteries together and then go off the positive bus bar onto the batteries. And then we're going to fire her up and see if she charges. <laughs> Woo! We're getting so close, man. We're so close. Before running the positive wire from the bus bar to the batteries, I had to incorporate a shut off. This just means that if I need to work on the system, there's no power going into it. Also, a fuse that you can see here. We're hooked up at the starter battery, so that end is good to go. I think this end's good now, and I'm just going to try it, basically. We have got some LEDs going on up there now, so it's doing something. You've got your wire input coming in, it's then fused and going to these two. It's then coming out of these two and into your bus bar with your negatives going to your negative. And then we're going through that shut off switch in case you need to work on the system afterwards. So it's not always live. Through another fuse into the batteries. The batteries are connected to each other positively and then negatively out to the bus bar. The bus bar is then connected down the back, around there, doof, and down into our earth down there. Before I do anything, I'm just quickly doing the update for the firmware on the Orions, which is the DC to DCs. They basically connect via Bluetooth technology, man, to uh, to your phone. So I'm doing the update on that now, and that's good to go. So what we can do is press continue. That's that one good, and then let's try number two. I think this setup here is pretty much as simple as we can go. If you wanted to sort of give yourself more of a safety feature, you could add a fuse into these two lines here, your input that goes into the bus bar from these two. That just means if you have a drama down here and something short and you don't lose both DC to DCs. The whole point of having two is one for more ampage and like power delivery, but also if one goes, at least you've got a backup at the minute. If one goes, they might both go because I've not fused those two. But the way I see it is the batteries are safe because they're fused from here and anything else that I add at a later date will be fused off that. So at the minute, the only things in danger of each other are the DC to DCs, but that's nothing that can cause a drama. What I will do, maybe at a later date, is connect these two to a fuse and then it will come back through into the bus bar. I really want to see if we can get these batteries charging now. So let's fire her up and see if we've got a bit of charging power. Here is the moment of truth. Oh. Whoa, tone change, warmer back there, colder out here, looks weird. 
Um, got the app set up, good to go, so I can see what it's saying. All we need to do now is fire bow up, and hopefully it works. Oh, for God's sake, I've just dropped my phone. Right, key. There she is, in the badger. Oh, where's my phone gone? I think this is only going to show up a decent amount. Oh, there's fluctuating voltage. 11.8. That's for 11.5. Let's see. Deselect. Oh my god, it's only one degree. Wow. Let us fire up. 13.14.2 volts. 14.3. 14.2. Okay, let's go back there. It can take up to a minute and a half, apparently, for it to register. Oh, well, what I'm gonna do now is jump onto the Renergy app, and you can jump onto the Renergy app, and because the batteries are Bluetooth, I can check on there, see if there's any power going into them. It's done, it's done. The batteries are now charging. You can hear the engine running in the background. That's now put in 30 amps a piece into each battery, so each 200 amp hour battery now is charging at 30 amps each. Well, it's under 30 amps, it's about 25 to 28. And I can tell that, because all I've done is downloaded the apps there, you can just see on my home screen, just the Victron app and the DC Home. DC Home is the battery, so if we click on those, this will tell us now what our batteries are saying. And that loads up. Battery number one is at 27.3 amps, and the other one is at 25 amps. That's got 50% in, that's got 48% in, that's how much the how much the battery's got in it right now. Um, when they started, they were at like 38, 40. So already we've got like 20 odd amp hours in each battery. It says fully charged in three hours and 52 minutes. Which to be fair, I've got to head up to the Lake District at some point because I need to get out into the sticks before I go crazy. So by the time I get up there, the batteries will be fully charged, good to go. All I need to do now to get myself in a good place is slam another wire off that positive bus bar with a fuse in the middle to a 12 volt box and then off the 12 volt box just run stuff like my diesel heater off that diesel heater 12 volt charging and you're good to go as long as you've got heat and you've got 12 volt charging you're squared I can edit my videos i can stay warm bob's your uncle fan is your aunt so what else have we got we've got the second app which is the victron app let's have a look at this badger i've relabeled my devices as left hand and right hand left hand right hand and you click on those and all that's telling you per battery is bulk charge battery is charging a maximum current until absorption voltage is reached at the end of the bulk charge the battery is 80 percent charged and ready for use the bulk charge charges it up to 80 percent and then after that it just sort of trickles it in um so you get like decent battery performance and stuff like that but i'm a bit i've done it <laughs> i'm buzzing i'm well happy with that so it actually works i didn't expect it to actually work but yeah, well happy with that. So, to cap it off, that is my build of my electric charging system. So there's nothing coming off that at the minute. At the minute, all I'm doing is charging my leisure batteries, my lithium leisure batteries off my vehicle battery. Uh, and that's mint for me because now I know I'm at a stage where I can just plug stuff into that system and I'm good to go electric wise. A lot of people do it a lot of different ways. There is a lot of ways that you can do the electric. Some people say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. But as long as you're safe and you've not got anything that's gonna come back and bite you, then crack on as you will. I'm content with that system. I know it's safe. There is some stuff that I'll add in the future to stop as extra safety precautions, not physical safety precautions as if for me or the van having dramas, but safety precautions within the system that if anything's to go, it doesn't take out both my DCs to DCs, it just takes out one and stuff like that. So then I'm not left in the wind, up in Dartmoor somewhere thinking, oh no, I've got no charging. Um, we're going to add a solar at some point, so there'll be a solar system, that's why I've left space on one side. But yeah, that's how I did it, that's how Jake's journey mate did it. Um, do it at your own risk, you crack off mate, and uh, you do you, but that's how I did it, and um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some keyboard warriors, but sweet as a nut, it's been an absolute pleasure gang, thank you for rocking up and joining in, there she is, Sola, Dumbledore, we're charging, we're good to go, let's get some batteries on, let's get cooking, Dumbledore, absolutely Dumbledore, thank you for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification if you want to know as soon as I upload another video. It's been an absolute pleasure.
peace out one love see you next time um any quezies drop them down below i'll try and get back to them asap peace here's just a final walkthrough talk through cap off of the overall build of this electric charging system here we've got your main entry to the system this wire is 35 mil in thickness it's single core and it goes through into this 100 amp fuse it then splits down into two 16 millimeter wires that go into the inputs of these two Victron DC to DC 30 amp charging power controllers. The power then needs to go somewhere from there, so it comes out of the positives and into this bus bar. This is a positive bus bar. This is a negative bus bar. On these charge controllers, there's also two wires, the black ones. They come out and they're your negatives. They go to the negative bus bars, so you can receive an earth from the van chassis. The positive goes out of the positive bus bar and into this shut off. You can shut this off here so you can work on the system without getting electrocuted. It then comes down here through this 100 amp fuse and down into the batteries. Here we have two 200 amp hour Renergy batteries that have got Bluetooth connectivity. Once the positive runs down from that 100 amp fuse, it comes down to the battery here. These batteries are connected to each other with one positive wire and one negative wire. The returning negative wire comes off this battery here and then back up to the negative bus bar, grounding it down this wire here that heads off under the bench here to the vehicle earth. The vehicle earth sits straight onto the chassis and that grounds out the system. So that's the entire charging setup and from there we can add anything that we need to onto the positive bus bar to charge stuff from there and that will drain power from the batteries that you can see below. Mm -hmm.